Hey everyone, I'm Raif Darazi, and this is your weekly roundup of the latest HIV news for the week of November 13th through 19th. Today I'll be going through 12 articles covering topics ranging from the EBT 101 CRISPR gene editing technique as a potential cure for HIV, new weight loss drugs appear safe and effective for people living with HIV, the negative impacts of same-sex criminalization globally, a new rapid test that simultaneously detects both HIV and tuberculosis, one step closer to an HIV vaccine, and more. I won't be reading the articles per se, but I will give you a brief summary and sometimes throw in my own opinion and or commentary. If you'd like access to the complete articles, all links will be available in the description box below. I just moved into my a new apartment and I'm still getting situated, so we're not quite set up yet, which is why my background looks a little different than it usually does. I want to give a huge shout out, a big thank you to Tan Anderson for two $29 donations via super thanks on both the Positive Plus One Christian Philip Mercer Hall video, as well as the latest HIV news video from last week. So thank you very much, Tan. Uh, by the way, Positive Plus One, the new app for our HIV community, is out now. It's live. Currently, it's only available in the US, Canada, the UK, South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand. But they do have plans to continue expanding and rolling this out as time goes on. In the meantime, if you do want a place where you can connect with our community, my Telegram group is still live and going strong. You can find the link to that as well in the description box. If you haven't seen the video talking about the app Positive Plus One, here's a card now so you can watch it. And you can also download it at the link below as well. See you inside. Number one, HIV Policy Lab. Global HIV Policy Lab Report. Progress and the Peril, HIV and Global Decriminalization of Same-Sex Sex. The 2023 report on HIV and global trends in same-sex sex decriminalization reveals a positive shift, with two-thirds of countries no longer criminalizing consensual same-sex activities. This marks a significant reversal from earlier AIDS pandemic trends. In 2022, more countries decriminalized same-sex sexuality than in the past 25 years. Despite the global trend toward decriminalization, some nations are intensifying penalties for same-sex activities, posing a challenge to the overall progress. The report underscores the link between regions without criminal penalties and advancements in the fight against AIDS. Additionally, it addresses the criminalization of transgender individuals, emphasizes the health and economic benefits of decriminalization, and discusses protective legislation against discrimination for LGBT communities. Case studies from around the world highlight diverse pathways to decriminalization, offering valuable insights. Number two, The Guardian. South Africa can't afford to pay for new anti-HIV drug despite price cut offer. South Africa's health department states that the reduced cost of a new anti-HIV injection from UK-based drug company Vive Healthcare is still three times more than it can afford. The price has been lowered from 729 Rand per shot to 540 to 570 Rand, making the medication taken every eight weeks more affordable, but still a financial challenge for the country with the world's largest HIV epidemic. The nonprofit price is cheaper than in the U.S., but the health department is concerned about sustainability and potential reliance on donors. While generic versions are expected in 2027, Vive suggests prices could drop considerably with larger orders. Number three, Futurity. A new rapid test can detect both HIV and tuberculosis at the same time, with just a small amount of blood. A new study published in Clinical Chemistry reveals a blood-based test capable of detecting HIV and tuberculosis simultaneously, while measuring viral and bacterial loads. Since HIV patients have weakened immune systems, they are at a higher risk of contracting TB. The traditional method of TB testing involves bacterial culture of sputum, or phlegm, but this is time-consuming and impractical for HIV patients. The new blood-based test eliminates the need for sputum, allowing for a quicker and more accessible diagnosis for TB in HIV patients. The test, which requires only a few drops of blood, uses mass spectrometry to detect viral and bacterial loads interventions and better patient outcomes. The researchers aim to move to clinical trials to seek FDA approval for the test, particularly crucial in developing countries with higher TB prevalence. 
Number four, Medical Express. Study uncovers mediators of persistent HIV viremia. Researchers at the Brigham and Women's Hospital have discovered mechanisms behind non-suppressible HIV viremia, also known as NSV, a condition where individuals on antiretroviral therapy continue to have low levels of viral presence in the bloodstream despite treatment. The study analyzed eight participants with NSV and found large reservoirs of proviruses, which are viral genetic material integrated into host DNA, inserted into transcriptionally active regions of immune cell genomes. These proviruses, though unable to replicate due to ART, contained mutations allowing them to evade detection and express genes leading to NSV. Continuing to understand these mechanisms may lead to the development of strategies to disrupt viral persistence in people living with HIV. Number five, Medical Express, another step toward the HIV-1 vaccine. Dynamics of Neutralizing Antibodies. An international research team, including Professor Dr. Florian Klein and Dr. Philips Schommers from the University Hospital Cologne, has studied the longevity of neutralizing antibodies in HIV-1 infected individuals. The research, published in Nature Medicine, reveals that the HIV-1 neutralization activity is dependent on the amount of virus in patients. The study, involving over 2,300 patients from various countries, identified factors leading to the natural formation of neutralizing antibodies and highlighted individuals known as elite neutralizers who build a potent and broadly neutralizing antibody response. Despite the overall decrease in antibody response over the years, highly potent broadly neutralizing antibodies remain detectable in some individuals, suggesting the potential for a lasting vaccine response. I've mentioned neutralizing antibodies before and the recent importance in research and I've also talked about elite controllers. Now this one talks about elite neutralizers. I'm not sure exactly what the differentiation is there. I have to look into it. That's the first time I've seen the term elite neutralizers, so I'll probably be following up with you on that. All right, number six, The Guardian. More people living longer with HIV AIDS in China, figures show. The prevalence of HIV AIDS in China has seen a significant surge over the past two decades, according to official data from China's Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Between 2002 and 2021, reported HIV AIDS cases increased from 1.09 per 100,000 people to 79.62, a rise of over 7,000% or 70x. The improved treatment and better access to testing have contributed to these soaring prevalence rates. The mortality rate for reported cases increased from 0.07 per 100,000 in 2002 to 1.31 in 2018 and slightly decreased to 1.28 in 2021 per 100,000. Mortality is the um, death rate. So higher mortality is a negative thing. While China's comprehensive strategy and pandemic control efforts have helped reduce incidence and mortality rates, a study suggests that the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on HIV outcomes may be worse than indicated by official data. The study found that the average yearly mortality rate for HIV increased by about 14% in 2020 to 2022, compared with 2015 to 2019, attributing it to compromised access to essential drugs during the pandemic. Despite progress in HIV surveillance and testing concerns about the crackdown on civil society, particularly LGBT plus groups and limited access to prevention methods like pre-exposure prophylaxis persist in China. Number seven, AIDS map. France on its way to drastically reduce new HIV infections. In France, significant improvements have been reported in the time it takes individuals to progress through the HIV care continuum, according to a study in clinical infectious diseases. The median time from HIV diagnosis to controlled viral load has been reduced from around eight months to two months, thus shortening the period during which people can transmit the virus. The study conducted from 2009 to 2019 showed decreased times between each step of the HIV care cascade. The transition from HIV diagnosis to linkage to care decreased from a median of 13 days in 2009 to 2011 to six days in 2018 to 2019 with a quarter of people linked to care on the day of diagnosis by 2018 to 2019. The authors emphasize the importance of maintaining universal access to healthcare for better HIV testing strategies and support for underserved populations. I can say that when I was diagnosed with AIDS in 2012, it took me about six, I want to say six to nine months before I was undetectable to, so to see that they're able to get folks to undetectable 
in from eight months to two months is fantastic. Number eight, Pew Research. Americans trust in scientists. Positive views of science continue to decline. A recent survey by the Pew Research Center reveals a decline in the share of Americans who believe science has had a mostly positive impact on society. Approximately 57% of Americans express a positive view, down 8% since November 2021 and 16% since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Concurrently, trust in scientists has diminished, with 73% of U.S. adults showing confidence in scientists to act in the public's best interests a 14-point decrease since the pandemic's early stages. The most notable decline in trust has been among Republicans, with 38% now expressing little or no confidence in scientists, a significant increase from 14% in April 2020. Democrats also witnessed a decline, with 23% expressing strong trust, down from 39% in 2020. Despite these trends, government investments in scientific research remain widely supported, with 78% of Americans considering them worthwhile. This general mistrust and skepticism of scientists is a big motivating factor for me and why I'm working so closely with scientists in the field of HIV cure research. I will always be a proponent for truth and transparency, education, to help rebuild trust, and it's exactly the lack of these things, I believe, that has led us into the position that we are in now. Number nine, spotlight. In depth, how do long acting HIV treatments work? Researchers are making strides in developing long acting antiretroviral medicines for HIV with the potential to replace daily pills, notably, injectables like cabotegravir and rilpivirine and the depivirine vaginal ring have entered the market. These formulations involve intricate processes considering pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics, ensuring a controlled release of the drug over extended periods. For instance, CAB-LA, cabotegravir, targeting the integrase enzyme, utilizes a nano-suspension delivery system with nanocrystals for slow and sustained release. The depivirine vaginal ring a flexible silicone ring gradually releases depivirine over a month, minimizing side effects. Advances such as a long-acting formulation for commonly used ARVs bring hope for convenient monthly injections in HIV treatment. Number 10, Los Angeles Times. Inside the world's largest AIDS charities, a troubled move into homeless housing. The AIDS Healthcare Foundation, a global nonprofit with a focus on HIV treatment and advocacy, has faced scrutiny over its foray into providing housing for people experiencing homelessness. Despite its vocal pro tenant advocacy and substantial funding for rent control campaigns, an investigation by The Times reveals that many of the foundation's over 1,300 residents live in squalid conditions facing threats of eviction. The AHF under President Michael Weinstein has spent over $300 million on rent control initiatives and property acquisitions. However, its inexperience in managing housing projects has resulted in numerous challenges, including code enforcement violations, public health complaints, and tenant dissatisfaction. The investigation sheds light on the complex issues surrounding the intersection of nonprofit advocacy and the practicalities of housing management in addressing homelessness. The article goes on to say, quote, while landlords weren't allowed to evict for overdue rent occurred during the pandemic, they could sue tenants in small claims court. The foundation has filed 69 such cases since last December, court records show. AHF doesn't employ social workers or offer social services for its tenants, including those with mental health and addiction problems. Decades of research show that housing first programs Pairing permanent housing with robust social services keep chronically homeless residents with serious mental health and drug problems housed. Models that serve the same population without services tend to fail, said Margot Kushel, a doctor and professor of medicine at UC San Francisco. Number 11, AIDS map. New weight loss drugs appear safe and effective for people living with HIV. Weight loss medications, specifically Glucagon like peptide 1, GLP 1, receptor agonists like semaglutide and terzepatide offer a promising solution for people living with HIV who struggle with weight gain. This is a significant concern as weight changes can lead to cardiovascular disease and other health issues. While lifestyle changes are crucial, 
pharmaceutical assistance becomes necessary for those with established weight gain. Recent studies show that GLP-1 receptor agonists can be effective in weight loss for people with HIV, even more so than in the general population. However, there are concerns about the cost, side effects, and the potential impact on factors like CD4 cell count. Advocacy for access to these medications, especially in low and middle income countries, is crucial to maximize their benefit for the HIV positive population. More research definitely needs to be done, especially on things like the potentially negative impacts on CD4 count and other possible side effects. And on to our last article, number 12, Mercury News. CRISPR gene editing could kill HIV, but is it a cure? In a groundbreaking move, three patients have undergone CRISPR gene editing therapies aiming to eliminate HIV from their bodies. The treatment, EBT101, created by San Francisco biotech company Excision Biotherapeutics, has shown no major side effects and received FDA's fast track designation. The therapy, delivered through a one time intravenous infusion, uses CRISPR to cut out essential HIV genes, potentially offering a cure. While results for the first three patients are undisclosed, six more will undergo higher doses. This ambitious trial, if successful, could revolutionize HIV treatment, offering hope for a cure and addressing the virus's ability to hide in cells. By the way, I absolutely will do a more in-depth video about EBT101. I just haven't had the time to do adequate research, but that video is coming, I promise you. And if I'm able to reach out to someone at EBT101 who would like to come on and do an interview, I would be more than happy to do that as well and hopefully answer some of your questions. Links to all these articles can be found in the description box below this video. Please like this video, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you get a notification every time a new video comes out. This, as well as sharing my video with anyone who might find value in it, is the best way that you can help support me and my channel. All right, until next time, and for those of you who celebrate the holidays, happy Thanksgiving, happy holidays. I'll see you next time. Cheers.